If you rest, you rust. Hi, I'm Jamie Brinkus. Welcome to Fit and Delicious. Learn first how to warm up properly. Then Danny has a recipe for easy and healthy fish tacos. And it's time for a little motivation and my top strategies for success. And a message from Danny on aligning your goals and intentions. We finish up with non-impact cardio to save your knees and back, along with a message from Jack LaLanne. It's all designed to keep the rust from building up. If you rest, you rust. Our bodies are meant to move, and if you're sitting down or just being inactive all day, well, you're not living your best life. Every day is another chance to get stronger, to eat better, and to live healthier, and to be the best version of you. Now, you have a choice. You can throw in the towel, or you can use it to wipe the sweat off your face. So let's move and get warmed up. Before any fitness movement, you should always properly warm up. You want to get that heart rate pumping and thumping by doing some type of rhythmic movement to get your body ready for the upcoming activity. Okay, let's get warmed up. Get off your seat and get on your feet. First thing we're going to do is a modified jack. Right here, guys, what you want to do is just bring the arms up and the legs go out. Okay, this is sort of a non-impact movement. Now, if you want to go all the way top on this one with the arms, that's fine too. Nice and easy. This gets the heart rate up, gets the blood flowing, gets that oxygen moving, and release. Now, right from here, do a standing knee grab. Just bring it up, up, right there. Boom. That's it. Stretch those hip flexors out. Nice and easy. That's it. One more. And release. Now, we'll do some shoulder circles right here. Small ones first. Okay, forward. Keep your tummy nice and tight, zipped up. That's it. Now, reverse, there you go, nice and easy, that's it. Now, large ones, get those shoulders nice and warm, that's it, and reverse, good. And release, now guys, elbows opposite knee, so right elbow goes to the left knee, left elbow to the right. Again, this is a non-impact move, just warming up. It gets you ready for any exercise, guys. That's it. Get that blood moving in a good direction. There you go. And release. Now here, I want you to tap the ground, okay? And then reach up. Tap the ground, reach up. Now, for a little advanced movement, okay? You wanna tap the ground and hop. Tap the ground and hop. It's a little more advanced, a little more impact, a little more challenging. One more. And release. Okay, now we want to march in place and crisscross the arms right there. That's it. Good, good. Nice and easy, guys. You're just warming up, getting ready for that action. Getting ready to get sweaty. And release. Here's one interesting. This is called a walkout. So you're going to bring it here. Just kind of walk it out and then walk it back. Nice and easy. It's not a crawl. Boy, this works your abs, your legs, your hip muscles. One more. And release. Now slowly pivot. My favorites, the windmill, you're here. Right goes to the left, left goes to the right. That's it, guys. That's it. No matter how you feel, guys, get up, dress up, show up, and never, ever give up. That's it. One more. And release. Now, I want you to lean in. This is a dynamic stretch. Lean to the left. And just kind of stretch the inner groin out here. You're stretching out the quadricep as well. It's not a static stretch. It's a dynamic stretch. And release. Other side. Just getting warmed up. That's all you're doing. But slow progress is better than no progress, right? So stay positive, and no, 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 don't give up, ever, ever. And release. Now, 
some hip circles right here. Knees are bent, so all I want you to do is swivel the hips. This looks odd, I know. <laughs> Why is a grown man doing this? But it really stretches out the hips. Let's reverse that. That's it, nice and easy. <laughs> this feels good. Here we go, guys. A Little bit, a little bit more, one more, and release. Okay, so now I want you to reach to the side. Up, up, get that leg off the ground. That's it, reach, boom, right there. Feel that stretch in the sides? It's great. Again, that heart rate's getting up. It's, it's certainly pumping and thumping. And now slowly hold it right there. You really feel that stretch right here? Nice. Switch to the other side. Hold it. And now, knees bent, twist. Now you're stretching out those abs, the lower back muscles. Knees are slightly bent, right? That's it, guys. You're doing great. Getting that body ready for some action. And release. Now, a couple nice big deep breaths. Bring it all the way up, nice vitality stretch. And release. One more. Bring it up. Nice big deep breath. Clasp the hands towards the ceiling. Hold it. Hold it. And release. Great. You did the warm up. Well done. Today I am showing you how to make easy fish tacos with the best fish taco sauce. Now there's three components to this recipe. We've got the creamy jalapeno cilantro sauce, which is so good. Then this really bright, crunchy coleslaw, and of course the fish. So let's start with the sauce. I am gonna warn you, the sauce is spicy, but it is so good and it completely elevates the flavor of the tacos. So it goes one clove of garlic, a cup of fresh cilantro leaves. Now you wanna take off the tough stems towards the bottom, um, but these thin ones that are attached to the leaves are just fine because they're nice and tender. Then I have a quarter cup of pickled jalapenos. And keep in mind, you can buy jalapenos that are super hot like these right here, or you can get more mild. Like this jar says that they are tamed. That just means they're not quite as spicy. So just make a choice according to your personal preference. They both work perfectly fine. Then I have two teaspoons of fresh lime juice, a half a cup of plain organic Greek yogurt, and then finally a pinch of kosher salt. We'll pop the lid on, and then I'm just gonna let that blend together until everything is pulverized and we have this nice, beautiful, bright, creamy sauce. It's likely that you're not gonna use all of this sauce for the recipe, so just save whatever you don't have in an airtight container in your fridge and use it for grilled vegetables, grilled shrimp, grilled chicken throughout the week. It is a delicious dipping sauce that's super versatile. Mm. Next, I'm gonna make the salah. So this is a really easy coleslaw recipe. Basically, you wanna start with three cups of shredded cabbage in a bowl. I love buying this pre-made coleslaw mix. It usually has a little bit of purple cabbage and carrot in there as well. So it's really bright and pretty and it just saves you a little bit of time because you don't have to do all the slicing and the dicing. Then to that, I've got a half a cup of thinly sliced and quartered red onions and a third of a cup of roughly chopped cilantro leaves, the juice of half of a lime, about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and a pinch of kosher salt. Again, I'm gonna just gently toss that all together and the coleslaw is ready to go. So we've got this creamy, spicy sauce with this really bright, refreshing, crunchy slaw. And the only other thing I like to prepare before making the fish are the tortillas. So I buy organic corn tortillas and I like to just char them over an open flame. So you just turn your oven on, get a little flame going, lay the tortilla on top, Give it 20, 25 seconds or so, and when the edges start to char, I just flip it over and get that little bit of char on both sides. So that really infuses a lot of flavor into the tortillas. Then I lay them right onto a piece of aluminum foil, fold that over, and let this rest in a 200 degree oven to keep them warm while we make the fish. And the fish is our last step, so here's what I do. As far as choosing a good quality fish, if you did not have mahi-mahi or if that's not available to you, you could make this work with cod, tilapia, um, snapper. It's really versatile. Or you could even turn it into like a veggie taco and do some roasted vegetables and use that as your filling. So with everything going on right now, just know that you can be super flexible with recipes like this and make them work for you. So for the mahi-mahi that I have here, it does have this skin on the outside. So 
the first thing that I do is I just get a nice sharp knife between the skin and the flesh of the fish and gently pull it towards me kind of up and away from the fish and towards the skin and that just kind of removes the skin right off. If you get a little bit of the flesh of the fish, don't worry about it. Just do your best and get that skin off and away. Then from here, I cut the filet in half, rotate it and cut into about half inch slices. Once I have all of the fish prepped and ready to go, I'm gonna season it. So I do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of smoked paprika right over the top, which has a nice warm smoky flavor without adding any more heat or any more spice. And a quick side note, if you wanted to um, prepare the ingredients ahead of time, you could certainly do the coleslaw and the sauce beforehand. And then when you're ready to eat, just cook up the fish, which literally takes minutes. And then all you have to do is assemble your tacos. Then I've got a nice large saute pan. I'm gonna bring that up to a medium heat coat it with a thin layer of olive oil, then get the little fish strips into the pan, season side down. Once I've got them all in the pan, I'm gonna season the opposite side, and by this time, the ones I started with are ready to flip. And you're gonna know they're ready to flip because you're gonna see that they're starting to turn opaque from the bottom up. And once it hits about that midway mark, you wanna go ahead and flip them over. It literally takes two, three minutes max. Then from here, I let the second side go for another two to three minutes. And once the fish is opaque all the way through, if you wanna double check, just cut a piece in half and you can know for sure the fish is done. So I shut the heat off, give the pan a nice big squish of fresh lime juice that just brightens all the flavors again, and then transfer the fish onto my serving dish. From here, this is how you could bring it all to the table. Now, if I was serving this family style or at a party or at a gathering, I would just have all the components out like this so people can make their own tacos. Not only is it beautiful, but it's really fun to do. So here's what I like to do. I start with my tortilla. I layer a little bit of that crunchy fresh slaw on the bottom. Then the fish strips right over the top. And then I drizzle that with that really creamy, bright cilantro spicy sauce. Then if you have it, I love to add a little extra fresh sliced radish. Again, adds a lot of color and it's really beautiful, but it also adds a great texture. And a few extra cilantro leaves just because I personally love the flavor. How beautiful is that? So adding a little something special to the menu is a really great way to put a little celebration in the day. Mm. 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 So many good things going on here. So good. So I am so excited for y'all to try this recipe. And when you do, make sure to snap a picture and tag me on Instagram and on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I will see you back here next time. Cheers. Through the years, people would always come up and ask me, well, how do you stay so lean? Now that I'm 60, I can tell you there's a few strategies that I've learned that I want to share with you that'll give you your best chance for success. And when it comes to weight loss and getting healthy, most people preoccupy themselves with the notion of less. It's always you can't have this or you can't have that. You have to eat less. Well, healthier approach to becoming lean is to add healthy choices to your diet rather than taking foods away. I want you to concentrate on the word more. If you truly desire a healthy approach to weight loss and inch loss and being healthy, I'd like you to concentrate on reprogramming your thinking to eating more of these food groups and really choosing more of these activities. Now, instead of less, it's more vegetables, more fruits, more whole grains, more healthy proteins, more healthy oils, more water, more movement, more sleep. Hey guys, you know what? I've got a great lean workout for you today. So guess what? Get off your seat and get on your feet. Let's get ready to get sweaty. You need a little small handheld weight for this one, guys. It's a dual movement. So one thing we're gonna do is again, concentrate on breathing. Make sure you don't stop breathing. Just breathe through these. This is a kettle swing. You're gonna bring it down all the way up. That's it. Sort of a full bodied exercise for your shoulders, your abs your back muscles and your legs. That's it. Couple more. Three, two, and release. Okay, now, this is interesting. This is gonna be a chest press with a tricep press and then a squat. So bring it out for a chest press, tricep, squat. So it's a kind of a triple movement. Boom, back, and down. That's it. Out, back, 
and down. Now let's do a little shoulder press here with a side step. You know, when it comes to exercise, more is not better. Better is better, right? So by combining certainly uh, strength training with resistance and also cardio gives you your best chance for success. Okay, let's switch it out. And it's out, so about that right there, right there, guys. There you go. Good. Hey, if you're not moving, you're snoozing, right? And release. Okay, now I want you to jog in place. Now this is sort of what I call fast feet. All right, so get those little feet moving. Let's go, guys. Come on, come on. That's it. Gets that heart rate pumping and thumping. That's what we want to do here. Nice and easy. Right there, right there, right there. And release. Now, I want four jabs here. Boom, 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 and a squat. Right there. Four jabs and a squat. Perfect, guys. Boy, you feel this? And squat down. I love this dual movement. It's a deadlift right there into a row. So you're working your back muscles, your, certainly your hamstrings, your buns, firmer, uplifted, rounded in the buns, and release. Now we're going to do a skater, right? It's a skater here, knee up. Skater, knee up. That's it, guys. Boom. Other side. Skater, knee up. Good. That's all it is. That muscle tissue, right? That's so important. Release. All right, guys. Now we got biceps with a side movement. That's it. Hey, let's finish it off right here with a tricep kick with a squat. That's it, guys. Dual movements. Optimum program, least amount of time, and release. Hey, you did it. Great job. Way to get lean. Today I wanted to take some time to chat about goals and intentions and getting them into alignment. And I have found for myself that working to keep your goals in alignment with your intentions can be a very powerful way of kind of staying on point in a way that feels good. So let's break it all down, shall we? When I think of a goal, I think of that as what we're trying to achieve or where we're trying to go or what we're trying to get, right? That's the thing we're after. And the intention is simply your why. And what you have to remember is everything that we want, we want because of how we believe it's gonna make us feel, right? So really your intention is a feeling. Right? So the first thing you want to do is identify your goal. So maybe it's to eat healthier, maybe it's to lose weight, maybe it's to get more energy, um, maybe it's to exercise more, whatever it is. Right? I'm going to use weight loss as the example for this video because that topic is near and dear to my heart. Okay? So let's say the goal is to lose some weight. Right? Well, the intention is the why. So I want you to ask yourself, why do I want to achieve this goal? Why do I want to lose the weight? And I want you to, to narrow that why down until you get to a place where you have one or two words, both of which would be a feeling, okay? So let me give you an example, right? I want to lose weight because I want to fit into my jeans. Okay, well, why do you want to fit into your jeans? Oh, because I feel like um, I'll look good when I'm in my jeans. Okay, well, why is it important to you to look good when you're in your jeans? Because I feel like when I look good, I feel more confident. Okay, good. So that's your intention, right? Confident. That word becomes your intention. The goal is to lose weight. The intention is confident. Or maybe it's, well, why do you want to lose weight? Because I want to feel light and I want to feel free in my body. Okay, great. So light and free. Those are your intentions, right? So I want you guys to get out a piece of paper and just maybe journal this out for yourself. Write your goal and then identify your why and keep asking yourself why you want the why until you get down to that descriptive feeling. And remember, a feeling is just one word. Then the work becomes to make sure that as you take actions towards your goal, that the actions that you are taking elicit the feelings, the intentions that you want to have, right? So a lot of times when somebody wants to lose weight, right? The goal is to feel light and free in the body. But a lot of the methods we use actually make us feel very heavy and stressed out and weighed down, right? So if you want to lose weight and you're doing restrictive dieting or you're over exercising or you are mentally beating yourself up, each one of those actions is in complete 
in direct contradiction with the intention, right? So you gotta kind of shift your approach in order to get where you wanna go. So if you find yourself taking an action that is out of alignment with your intention, that is where the work is, right? You've gotta back it up and say, okay, how can I shift this so I'm creating this feel state for myself right now, right? Because if we want to say lose weight so we can feel light and free, and on the journey to light and free, we constantly feel heavy and weighed down, we're never gonna get there. Because you have to remember that the journey informs the destination. So we have to bring that feeling, that desired space into the everyday, into the now, into the little things we do on a daily basis. And it's all of those little things that eventually get you to the place you're trying to go. But I want you to feel like by the time you get to that goal that you're feeling inside is like, of course, of course I got to that goal. Because all along the way, you were creating these small steps that were in alignment with your intention and therefore in real alignment with your goal. So that by the time you get to that goal, you just you have so much knowing, so much belief, so much confidence that it's going to happen because you are quote unquote in the flow. And I know I'm making this sound like it's super simple. It's not necessarily, right? It takes a little bit of practice. It takes some tweaking. It takes some back and forth. It takes some grace. It takes some patience. But I do promise you that this is a very helpful tools. So if you find yourself with resolutions or goals that are already getting really messy and not feeling so good, grab your journal, go through this video, take some notes and work it out for yourself. Have you ever had sore knees or a sore back? Listen up. I'm going to show you a few non-impact cardio moves that get your heart rate up without sacrificing your joints. Get off your seat and get on your feet. Let's go. Hey, you need a chair for balance, guys, okay? First thing we're gonna do is a modified jack. So you're right here, all right? Now, again, we wanna really take care of those joints, especially as we age, right? So you can do this. You can also bring your arms all the way up. That's perfect. Keep the abs nice and tight as you do this. And then release. Now, we're gonna do a touch and reach. So again, you're gonna bring it down and up, down, and up. Still gets the blood flowing, still gets the heart rate up without any jarring of the joints. That's it. One more. And release. Now from there, guys, we're gonna do our skaters. Here's your chair for balance. Bring it right out. Again, it's almost like a curtsy, okay? It's all you want to do is bring one leg behind the other, a little bit angled, so you get that heart rate up, okay? Now again, use the chair as balance, it's okay and release. Okay, from there, we do four squats with a couple jabs. So, here we go. Nice and easy. And now what I want you to do is punch. That's it. That gets the old heart rate pumping and thumping. Four squats again. Boom. There you go. Nice and easy. One more time. And right here. Boom. And release. Now, this is a great one. You want to stand here, and that's all you want to do is oblique crunch, it's called. Standing oblique crunch. So you're just crunching one side and then the other. That's it. But again, you can feel your heart starting to, starting to jump up right now, right? That's a good thing without any impact. One more. And release. Now, let's do those uppercuts right here. Here, up, up, up. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, guess what? Up, up, or quicker, quicker, right? Speed, 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 here we go. Abs nice and tight, and release. Okay, guys, from there, we're gonna reverse the legs, okay, with a kick. Step back, kick the leg up. Step back here, kick. That's it, nice and easy. Now again, you're doing a non-impact move, but you, again, you can feel your heart rate starting to increase. That's a good thing. You're still getting some cardio uh, benefits here. One more, down and up, okay? Switch the other side. We're gonna go back and then kick. Back, that's it, guys. 
Tell you what, my heart rate's going. How about yours? It's a good thing. There you go. One more. Back and then kick. Now what I want you to do is what I call a four box step. So you're here. It's one, two, back, back. Front, front, back, back. There you go. That's all it is. Good. A couple more. Again, you can really feel it in your quadriceps. It works your hips, your buns, and your thighs. Okay, so what I want you to do is a side step. Side step, knee up. You want the uh, chair for balance, that's okay. Knee up, out. Boom, right there. One more, out and up, okay? Let's go to the other side. Side step, knee up. There you go, boom, right there. That's it. One more, one more. And release. Now I'm gonna do what I call a mountain climber. It's here, okay? Step up, up, up. That's it, nice and easy. Driving those legs up, good. Keep those abdominals nice and tight. And hey guys, release. I got my inspiration for mountain climbers from Jack LaLanne. Let's take a look at his version. One, two, three, four, higher. Two, three, four, up. Two, three, four, up we go. Down we go, up. Two, three, four, up. Now hold it up, hold it up, 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 higher and down. Wow, right in there, huh? Mm. The other leg, begin. One, two, three, four, up. Two, three, four, higher. Two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and rest. Now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Down. As long as we're in this position, then I'm gonna give you a breather. Do this, keep here, and lift this leg up as high as you can here, and the other one up high. I want something that'll get this waist again. Go. One, two, three, four. Leg straighter, and rest. So promise yourself not to start rusting and learn the secret to lean living next time on Fit and Delicious. For videos, tips, and the eight day challenge, visit fitanddelicious.com. To become a Fit and Delicious member where you'll find over 90 videos, tips, and inspiration, plus all 13 episodes of Fit and Delicious, go to fitanddelicious.com. This is episode 105.